he must have wondered if he had wasted his whole life. He must have questioned, how did I get to this place called Midian? He had grown up in Pharaoh's palace. He had been trained to lead armies. He grew up in opulence and luxury, and now he's in Midian. You can't find Midian on a map. It's as good as no place. First 40 years of his life, he was in the precincts of Pharaoh with everything. In the next 40 years, he's a Midian and looking at sheep. That's a long way from looking at armies. And these sheep are nipping at each other. Anybody ever work with sheep? Moses is the, is the patron saint of all parish priests. <clears throat> <laughs> He's a Midian because he committed a crime back in Egypt and had to run. He's an outlaw. He's a criminal. And he must have wondered, how did I get here? One day he's at the Mount Horeb. The word Horeb means wasteland. And there's cruel irony in that because there's a wasteland because it's nothing but desert. But the wasteland's not only out there, the wasteland's here. Because when he looks inside, he sees devastation and loss. He's there one more day looking at the sheep. And he notices that there is a bush burning over here, which was not unusual in the desert. Bushes could just combust. But what was unusual is that this bush is burning but not consumed. And Moses decides, well, I'm going to turn aside. Very important phrase. I'm going to turn aside and see what's happening. And when he does turn aside, God begins to speak. What does God say? Moses. Imagine that, a voice speaking to you out of a bush that's on fire. That gets your attention. And he says, Moses, I've seen the oppression of my people, and I'm calling you to go back to Pharaoh. Remember, he's wanted there, probably a different Pharaoh, but his picture's in all the post offices. You go back to Pharaoh and you free my people and you take them to the promised land. Is that it, Lord? Whenever I read scripture, especially when I'm, I have the joy and anticipation of seeing you, I always ask this question, so what? You all know the story. I even had Claudia giggling. I've never heard anybody giggling while we're at the burning bush, but she enjoyed the Jebusites, the Gergesites, and all the ites. You liked all the ites. It's not enough, I feel, that I inform you what these stories say. I've got to translate these stories into my life and into your life so that our lives are transformed. I fail as a priest and preacher if you leave here and are not changed somewhere, somehow, somebody. I failed. I should get real work. So I always ask, so what? What difference does this story from 3,500 years ago, what could it possibly make a difference? If I don't do that, then all we are is a historical society, or hysterical society. But we're not. We're the church of the living God, which means that we have to ask some questions to get into the story. Do we know Midian? Has anybody here ever wondered, how did I get here? 
This is no place. I have wasted my talents and my abilities, my background. I've wasted it all. Or how about this? Anybody here know Horeb? A place of wasteland? And everywhere you look, it's loss and devastation. Might be a divorce. Might be one of your children in a lot of trouble or saying goodbye to a child. Or it might be you lose your work or you lose your reason of living. Anybody here know Horeb? Well, apparently you know Midian better than Horeb. All right. How about this? Anybody here know Pharaoh? Oh. <laughs> Who's Pharaoh? Pharaoh are th those situations, those people that intimidate us, that make us want to run, that make us feel like we can't actually go back home. Midian, Horeb, Pharaoh, what's left? Have any one of you ever looked at your life and said, this is impossible? That task is greater than my abilities. Do we know Moses? Do we know this moment? If you don't, come see me after the service. I'll help you. So all that happens, and Moses is just st stunned. He's stupefied. The bush, the voice, the calling. And he said, well, voice, Lord, how can I do all that? And the voice says, I'll be with you. And then Moses says, well, who are you? Who, who are you? And the voice says, I am who I am. Dave, that was just, you, you did just the right pause on that. I am who I am. And you, did you hear his voice go, little, 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 you got it? I am who I am. We can't translate that phrase. It can also mean, I will do what I will do. I am the beginning and the end. I am. Moses doesn't quite understand what that is. But it's the great I am. So, we know Moses. We know Midian. We know Horeb. We know Pharaoh. We know impossible situations. Those are not the questions. The question is this. Do we know the I am. Or better, and more importantly, does the I am know us? Every time Jesus uses the expression, I am, he is hearkening back to this most pivotal moment in the Old Testament with the most important person. Moses towers over all. He's hearkening back to this moment and he's saying, just as the I am was with Moses, the I am in me will be with you. So what did Jesus say? I am the bread when you are hungry. I am the way when you don't know your way. I am the vine that can feed you when you feel like you're desiccated. I am the gate when you don't know the way through. I am. I am the good shepherd when you don't need no, you don't know how to get home. And every one of those moments when Jesus says the I am, he's speaking straight to us. So, what did, what did the I am do for Moses? It took this old man in his 80s who felt like a criminal who could not go home 
who was lost, who was bored out of his mind. It took him and helped him to go face Pharaoh and negotiate with Pharaoh and then to gather up the people, lead them on their way out of Egypt, took them through the Red Sea. They saw the Egyptian army die, took them to Sinai to get the law, took them, went up Sinai again to get the law again, who brought down manna from heaven, who brought up water from the earth, who got him to the promised land. That's what the I am did for him. What can the I am do for us? All the same. Whenever we feel stuck or lost or lonely or broken or afraid or we've got nothing left to give, The great I am is there for us. The great I am, and we call him Jesus. The thread between Moses and Jesus and us is this. It's one of the great themes in Scripture. It's Exodus. Moses, this is the moment for the Jewish people. If you go to Passover supper, you do the whole thing over again. He led them from slavery into freedom from Egypt into the promised land. This, this was, I, I, I can't help but to have a moment. This was Esther. Everybody know Esther? Everybody, everybody doesn't know Esther. You should know Esther. Saint Esther. This was, you will see that she's African American. This song was one of these songs for the African American people with Moses. Go down, Moses. Way down Egypt land. And what they heard and what we need to hear, Nancy, I see you too. Nancy, what we need to see is that we all need our exodus. Our brothers and sisters needed it, but all the rest of us need an exodus in our own life. And Jesus is the exodus. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. We say it every Sunday. He's our exodus from being separated from God to being reconciled with God, from being lost in sin to being covered by grace. He's our exodus. And we need to hear the word exodus on two levels. One's a personal level. Everybody here has got an exodus that God has for you. Everybody here has an exodus that you cannot do without the great I am. It's one of the, way, the ways the great I am brings us. He gives us things that are bigger than us so that we need to fall to our knees and say help. And God rejoices, finally, they said help. But that's true not only for us as individuals, but it's true for communities. Turn aside. Turn aside. Turn aside. Kind of look around. A little lean on Labor Day Sunday, but it's all right. The angels and the archangels are here. It fills it out. But turn aside. Think back. Think back kind of where things were at some point in the past and where things are now. Do you not see an exodus? So we're called into exodus, each one of us, and we're called into exodus as a community, and the great I am is here, holding us, leading us, feeding us, nurturing us, pushing us, challenging us, po poking at us, provoking us, and with the great I am at our side and the great shepherd who's always with us, we are on our way to the promised land. Amen.